Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough, and here is a mini dose of Dr. Debbie where I'm sharing tips, suggestions, strategies, and sometimes just motivation to have you move past your betrayal once and for all. Hi there. Last week, I held a one-day VIP retreat for a handful handful of clients. And it was so incredible. It's my new thing, by the way, I'm going to be doing probably one a quarter. So if this is of interest to you, uh, reach out and and we'll get you on the list for this. But it was just a a handful of this time, amazing women we've had men uh, in the past, we have plenty of men within the PBT Institute. And the whole idea, the whole premise behind it was to transform, to move so fully and completely out of stage three into stages four and five. And the day was magical. But there was something that I found so consistent with each of the participants. And I want to share this because this is one of the greatest reasons why or why you won't heal from your experience. So if I were to say one word that made all the difference in the world, it was willingness. These women were so willing to do a few things. And I actually made note of five things. The first thing they were willing to do was move through their comfort zone. You know, think about it. We stay within our comfort zone. And you know, you may have heard that, that saying, I think it was Neil Donald Walsh, who said, life begins outside of your comfort zone. What happens is we may do something, we meet up against our comfort zone, it gets scary, we retreat. We move a little bit, and then we expand a little bit. And then all of a sudden, again, we meet up with our comfort zone, we retreat. And we do this on and on and on and on. And that's why life really doesn't change all that much because we're staying within the confines of this comfort zone. Yes, it's familiar. It feels, you know, like we know it and we do, but that's all it is. It's familiar. If you are willing to move past your comfort zone, that's where change begins. And that's where life begins. And if you're wondering why nothing is changing, take a look. Are you willing to get uncomfortable? Because that discomfort happens outside of your comfort zone. And that's one of the simplest ways to measure your change. Change will not happen when everything feels the same. Change will happen when you're feeling that discomfort, because that discomfort means, hey, I'm doing something I'm not used to doing. I'm I'm doing something that's unfamiliar. And so often we stay with the familiar known, not because it's good, it's only familiar. That's the only benefit to it. So if you're willing to move uh, into a space that is uncomfortable for you and willing to move past your comfort zone, then you will notice uh, a change. And that was so so that was one thing that they all had in common, that they were uh, they were willing to move outside of their comfort zone. And I saw it. I saw it even from the way they entered into the day to the way uh, by the time they left, they were different. The second thing I noticed was they were willing to venture into the unknown. Now, this is a little bit different because not only is it uh, moving past the familiar space that has grown to be so comfortable, but one of the reasons why we, you know, you may know people, maybe this is even you, very little has changed your entire life. Right. And so and then even take a look at your betrayal experience. Maybe you have repeat betrayals with the same person, with other people, because everything is staying as is. And when you uh, and I'm not suggesting it's your fault, it's your opportunity, unless and until you look at the scenario saying, okay, what's what's going on here? And what about me? Do I need to stop and look at? Was I allowing boundaries to get? crossed? Did I not believable how lo- believe believable? Did I not believe how lovable, worthy, and deserving I am? Is that what's going on? So I'm settling for uh, relationships that don't represent uh, a version of me who would feel better about themselves. Like what's going on? You want to take a look again, not that the betrayals are your fault, but there's something going on within you. That's a call for w- why why are these repeat betrayals happening? Is it is it a, a, like a lack of discernment? What's going on? 
And because the more you take a look and the more you understand it, well, then that's, again, that's how that change happens. So getting back to these women were willing to venture into the unknown. They had no idea what I was going to be doing with them for the whole day, but they, they were willing. They were willing to play full out. You know what it's like? It's like when you go to a movie, you don't really know what the movie's going to be about, but you're willing to put yourself in a scenario and into a space where you are going to watch this movie, experience the feelings, all that goes along with it and enjoy the ride, hopefully, right? Well, it's the same thing. These women were willing to venture into something. They had no idea what was going to happen, but the intention was, I know there's a part of me that wants to learn, wants to grow, wants to heal, and I'm going to venture into the unknown to allow for this experience. So take a look at this. For you, if you're unwilling to venture into the unknown, what's going on and why? Right now, I'm not saying, saying venture into like impending doom, but I'm saying if something, again, it's unknown to you, that doesn't mean it's bad. It's, it's like everything you're doing now at one point you weren't doing. So it was unfamiliar until it's familiar. But here's something where venturing into the unknown can lead you to this new space of, of wisdom where you're taking your information you, you know, things that have happened, making some sense and meaning out of it and, and really coming out of it with a new awareness perspective insight that you didn't have. So they had the willingness to venture into the unknown. We covered two so far. They were willing to uh, move out of their comfort zone where life begins. They were willing to venture into the unknown. A third thing I noticed, they were willing to think bigger. So often we stay, again, we stay in the confines of what we know. Well, this is what I do. Well, this is who I am. Well, this is the way it is. And we have a very limited perspective. And, you know, this reminds me of, we've heard that saying about the, uh, uh, the four minute mile, right? Couldn't be beat, couldn't be beat. And then all of a sudden, Roger Bannister, I think was his name. Roger Bannister breaks the four minute mile. And then what happens? I think like a thousand people did it since or something like that. I'm no good with numbers, but that's just a general idea. And th because they were willing to think bigger. When we uh, only think, we only perceive things a certain way. Well, this is my body. This is how it is. It's not going to change. Well, then it won't. This is my financial situation, it's not going to change. Well, then it won't. Well, this is all I can expect with my health or, you know, well, then it won't change. This is all I can expect from my job or from my kids or from my friends. Well, then things won't change. When you uh, are insisting that things stay at the level that they're currently at, well, then you will get what you you know, what you, your mind only wants to prove you right. So if this is what you think, this is what you receive. If you are willing to think a little bit bigger, stretch it a bit, um, a little bit different than moving outside your comfort zone, but the idea of just thinking now, we're just talking about thinking in a way that's bigger than what you've been thinking, then, you know, then, then that's what happens. You know, I've had so many coaches, I've been in business 33 years and any, any good coach has a coach. And I remember um, this was a, it was a, a financial lesson we were learning in this one particular mastermind. And you were supposed to think really big about, you know, how you, what you perceive in your business. What's the, what do you think financially your business can do and whatever it was. And I remember the person saying, put a zero after it, right? Making it just that much bigger. We're always uh, able to do so much more than we think. But if we only think, if we're thinking so small, then we'll at best achieve that, right? What's that saying? Shoot for the moon and you'll hit the stars, something like that. Think bigger. So these women had a willingness to think bigger. So now we covered three. We covered they were willing to move out of their comfort zone. They were willing to venture into the unknown. They were willing to think bigger. They were also, this one I loved, they were willing to give up their story. Now, they had a powerful story. They were betrayed. They were duped. They were blindsided. They were hurt. This may have been a reoccurring thing. This may have been, you know, one time thing, whatever it was, everybody had their own story. Look, I have my own story too. 
And it's a powerful story. If I told it to you, I'd get lots of sympathy. You'd feel really bad for me. And then you walk away from that experience and that's all you get. But if you're willing to let go of that story, you can have a story that's so much more rewarding and fulfilling. Like, think about it because I was willing to give up my story. Look at the story now. We're helping thousands and thousands of people move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. We, you know, within the PBT Institute, our members who were doing so beautifully, certifying coaches, the books, the TEDx talks, the stages, the, all of it. It's all because I was willing to give up the story of Yes, I've been betrayed by, you know, my most important people in my life, right? My everybody, my biggest influences in my life, my family, my husband. But look at the story now. Look what I've done with it. I didn't do anything you couldn't do. I just knew that there was a story that was so much better. And that's what happened with all of the women at the retreat. They had a really powerful story. And every time they fed into it, every time they, they thought about it, every time they, they you know, were, were dealing with it, it brought it all up. The pain, the trauma, the everything. I am not suggesting for one second you don't have to move through it. That's what they've been doing within the PBT Institute. However, there comes a point and you all know when this point is for you, when you can choose to move past the story or stay in it. I'm not suggesting early on, but there comes that point. It's like a, a choice point where you can do more of the same. You know what to expect. You can get the sympathy from you know whoever you speak with. You can you can satisfy that need to feel right. You know we like feeling right to feel like you know you, you just your story becomes so perfected and everything that goes with it. Or you choose a different story, one that's so much more empowering. I'm not suggesting that you're going to question, does that mean I'm letting that person off the hook? Does that mean I'm a sucker? Does that mean I'm setting myself up for it to happen again if I forgive and all these other things? Not at all. Not at all. But what you're doing is you're choosing a more empowering story because that's who you are. You're not what happened to you. It's what happened to you. That's not who you are. But we personalize it as if it's all about us, as if we're not worthy, we're not deserving, we're not this, that, the other thing. And then it shatters our confidence, our sense of self, our self-worth, our self-esteem, all of these things because of someone else's actions. So when we move through all that, we realize, oh my gosh, you know what? Even though it happened to me, it's not about me. And then from there, we can begin to create a very empowering story. That's actually something that when you move into stage four, one of a, a in our signature program, Betrayal to Breakthrough, with uh, we have a, a courses section within the PBT Institute. We have a very uh, important activity. It's called writing your coherent narrative. And here's where you actually take your situation and talk about the benefits of it. Now, I know some of you are like, benefits? Now I know she's crazy. No, in the beginning, early on, you're not ready to do that. But by stage four, you are. And I'm saying benefit it meaning like, wow, I didn't realize how confident I was. I didn't realize how resilient I, I was. I didn't realize that I really am a strong, you know, independent person. Like you realize all these things as you move through your experience. And we want to give you that opportunity to express it, to feel it, to know it. So when you are willing to let go of your story for a story that serves you so much better, it's so inspiring and empowering. So that was another thing that they did. So I covered four of them so far. Willingness to move out of their comfort zone, willingness to venture into the unknown, a willingness to think bigger, a willingness to give up their story. And the fifth thing I noticed, and you know, you've heard me say this, if you've been listening for a while or watching for a while, I have a saying it has served me in business 33 plus years. It applies to just about every topic you can think of hard now, easy later. Easy now, hard later. Take your pick. It's going to be one of those two. What I noticed with every single one of these women was they were willing to embrace the idea of hard now, easy later. And here's what I mean by that. And maybe you're thinking, 
I don't even understand this because it's been so hard and it's been so hard my whole life. It's been so hard. The, the whole uh, course of this relationship, it's been so hard, you know, for the last bunch of years. However, this is, I want to make sure I explain this. The reason why it's been hard, that's not the kind of hard I'm talking about. It's been hard because nothing has really changed. There's been no drastic, dramatic action where the old no longer exists, whether that's the old relationship, whether that's the old you, whether that's the, the old beliefs, anything like that. And what, I, and what people tend to do is they, they try to patch it up. They try to just tweak things. They try to just move through it or hope that time heals it or hope, uh, hope a new relationship heals it. And you've heard that saying, hope is not a strategy. Well, either is time and either is a new relationship. And the research proved it. You cannot count on time. You can't count on a new relationship to heal betrayal until and unless you deliberately and intentionally heal it. It will follow you around in everything you do. You will notice it in your health, in your work, in your relationships. Now, even though it's hard, I agree with you. It's hard in that the experience is hard. The symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome, those symptoms, that's hard. The way you feel in your relationship, in your relationships, that's hard. But it's hard because it's the easy now, hard later. It's hard, it's hard because nothing is changing. You're not putting, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm just saying this, you, you know if you're doing this or not. You're not putting an end to the old way. If the old, uh, old you, let those boundaries be crossed. If you haven't changed that, then you're feeling the impact of that. If uh, if you're allowing certain certain things to happen that you know in your gut aren't right, there it, it means you're not being uh, you're being treated with a level of disrespect, where you're not feeling loved, or you're not feeling like someone's being honest with you, or they're gaslighting you, or they're twisting it around and being defensive and manipulative in some way. If this version of you has not done something with that to deal with that in some way, and with some of those people, you just even can't. There's nothing to work with there. Yes, the impact of it is hard, but the actions, but the uh, the actions are the same, and that's why I say easy now, hard later. It's very hard because nothing drastic and dramatic is happening to change any of that. I hope I explain that. When I say hard now, easy later, I mean the old you is dead and gone. The old relationship is dead and gone, and. It's it's hard in that someone says something or does something, the old you may want to react and respond. And before anything comes out of you, you have to stop and think about it and say, okay, wait a second. The old me, what would the old me have done? The old me would have tolerated and allowed that. Oh, wait a second. Uh, uh-uh. The old me doesn't exist anymore. This version of me has to do things differently, has to say things differently, has to feel differently, has to react and respond differently. So before anything comes out of your uh, of your mouth it's gone through that filter where if the old you did it and that doesn't fit anymore it's not the same words it's not the same thing it's not any of the same it's all new now i'm not suggesting all of the old you you don't want to bring with you there are parts of you that are so wonderful and beautiful you may have a big heart and you you're so loving and so all of these things you still want to bring the best parts of you, but the parts of you that don't serve anymore, this version of you that you are intentionally creating, those are the ones you don't bring with you. So that's where I'm talking about hard now, hard now in that something will happen. Someone will say something, someone will do something. And maybe the old you was like, whatever. No, 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 no. You're, if, if that meant that you will be, you know, you won't be considered uh, or you, you, you'll be overlooked or whatever it is. You want to stop, assess all of it. That's the hard now. You're creating a version of you that did not exist. That's the opportunity. And the biggest waste of opportunity is 
you 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 get betrayed you feel so horrible you've been so hurt your heart's so broken you get yourself back together enough to tolerate that again no way no way you've been through too much to do that use this opportunity use it to create a version of you that otherwise couldn't be exist if this experience hasn't happened, you know, I'll never forget. And I may have shared this on another show. I remember a woman said to me, she, she really wanted to work with me. And she said, Dr. Debbie, please just make it that I'm going to be okay with his betrayals. What? Like what? She wanted me to like rewire her mind so that somehow the betrayals that he was planning on and had no intention of stopping wouldn't bother her. Not my world. I, I, I just, that's clearly not the work I do and told her I, I, I can't help her with that. You have come way too far, but I'm not suggesting this work is easy. This is the hardest and the most transformative work you'll ever do, but it takes hard now easy later. Hard now taking a look at everything, how you're showing up how you're acting, how you're reacting. Do you like it? Bring it forward. Do you not like it? Uh, mm, mm. It stops right here. You change it and then um, do something a little bit different. So to recap the five things these brave warriors did uh, at my one day VIP retreat, a willingness to move past their comfort zone, venture into the unknown, think bigger, give up their story and embrace the idea of hard now, easy later. I would recommend to you, are you willing to do those five things? Of course, I am here to help you however I can, whether it's working within the PBT Institute, join me on my next, uh, at my next VIP in-person retreat. But at the very least, I invite you to ask yourself those questions. Are you willing? And here's an even bigger question. If you're unwilling, why? Why? And there's no judgment here, but I have seen this a million times. People are unwilling to make those changes because they're afraid of the unfamiliar. They're afraid they'll outgrow their betrayer. They're afraid they'll outgrow their, let's say, support group who, if you're not commiserating and just like complaining, you don't belong. So those have become their people. And if they heal, uh-oh, where are their people? Or their betrayer who has no intention of, of changing, yet they don't have, they're, they're afraid if I outgrow them, I'll be alone. So it's better to be with my betrayer who will keep betraying than be on my own. I want you to think of these things because it is keeping you so rooted in stage three, actually in stage two and stage three, because again, you're going to be re-traumatized every time it happens. Plus you're going to have so many symptoms of post-betrayal syndrome. So I want you to ask yourself these questions, these five questions. And then if you come up with, why are you? Uh, unwilling, see the price you're paying for uh, being unwilling. Again, no judgment here, but there's a big price you're paying. And if you have kids too, uh, I invite you to just, I'm going to throw a little thing on top of that too. What are they learning and what are they seeing? They deserve uh, a parent who is strong. It's it, it, There's no fault and there's no shame in them seeing you hurt, but at the very least, you know, they want to see you rise. I know you can do it. You are so much stronger than you think. I have seen this over and over again. But we, uh, when we're tested, betrayal sure is a test. That's when you have an opportunity to see how strong, how resilient, how confident you truly are. It's so much more than you think. I wouldn't say it if I didn't experience that personally. And if I didn't see that every single day in all the coaches that we certify and all the brave warriors we see within the PBT Institute, it's waiting for you as well. So check your level of willingness. If you're unwilling, see what's going on there. If you're a parent, your kids are watching. So I know I laid a lot on you. I hope that helps. 
You need the right tools, support, and the right community to move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. And we have all that within the PBT Institute. So join us at the PBT, as in post-betrayal transformation, thepbtinstitute.com. There's a version of you who's so confident, healthy, peaceful, and happy on the other end of your healing. And we can't wait to help you get there. We got you. Thanks for listening. And here's to your breakthrough.